The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the SBWLA February 2022 technical meeting. Let me just uh, pull up my screen here. Hopefully everybody can hear me uh, loud and clear. And I've lost my PowerPoint. Okay, you should be on now. So, um, if there's any problems, oops, we've done it again. If there's any problems, uh, well, there should be no problems. So, hopefully, uh, everybody's uh, can see our title slide for this month's meeting: Saturation and Sigma measurements in carbonate formations with multiple pulsed neutron technologies. A case study from Southeast Turkey, presented by Anna Maria. She's online and ready to go. So before we do that, I'd just like to uh, point out our sponsors again: PTT, PTTEP, Scientific Drilling, Mubadala Petroleum, Emerson, Gaia Earth Sciences, Chevron, and Med Energy, Medco Energy. So. Thanks to, to them for their continued sponsorship. Hopefully we can uh, go back to live events, in-person events, and uh, we can um, make use of their uh, donations and enjoy a bottle of wine. Uh, first, housekeeping. There is a questions tab on the on the control panel for GoToWebinar. If you can type your questions in there, I will answer the question, I will ask the questions to Anna at the end of her presentation and uh, she will address them at that stage. So questions to be answered at the end. So without further ado, we can roll on to the main event. I'm not sure why that keeps cutting out, but so I'd like to introduce Anna Maria, who has 13 years service company experience in the oil and gas industry. She has a Bachelor, a bachelor of Science in Petroleum Geology and an MSc in Reservoir Engineering from the Oil and Gas University in Romania. After graduating in 2008, she started her career as a log analyst with Weatherford in Romania. And then since 2011, Anna Maria has been undertaking the role of production petrophysicist for RAPTOR, which is Weatherford's case hole evaluation system. To date, she's built a portfolio of more than 100 successful projects for numerous clients, covering multiple geographies and a plethora of geological settings some of which have resulted in published papers. Today's presentation is based on an SBE paper presented in Abu Dhabi in November last year. It's available on One Petro, and the uh, details are up on the screen now. So you can uh, download that at your leisure. So as of now, I will hand the, the uh, screen over to Anna Maria and she can take over the, 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 uh, the podium. Should be all yours now, Anna. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful presentation. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or probably good evening. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for taking your time to uh, to uh, attend to my presentation. Uh, I will turn off the, the camera now, but I will uh, uh, open up uh, after the, um, the presentation. Okay. 
So um, in uh, today's presentation, uh, I'd like to say a few words about the pulse neutron applications and uh, some basic theory of uh, logging, followed by some uh, uh, features and technical specification for the pulse neutron tools, uh, describing what Raptor and uh, GSI technologies are. And then I will go to the actual presentation by talking about the saturation and sigma measurements in carbonates using the described pulse neutron technologies with a case study from Southeast Turkey. Uh, this, uh, this study includes some uh, introductory information. Then um, we'll go straight to uh, well a presentation where I'll describe the general uh, formation, drilling and completion uh, of the well, and uh, we'll include also some logging um, information details. The log data will be then um, evaluated, uh, QC'd, and uh, with the help of, of the workflow, we'll get to the results of uh, petrophysical interpretation. That includes formation sigma, mineralogy, porosity, and oil saturation uh, determination. Uh, as for the um, uh, last part, uh, we will keep the conclusion and then the um, Q&A uh, time. Uh, most of the people are familiar with this uh, primary pulse neutron application to find the uh, hydrocarbon uh, in the formation through casing. Uh, but uh, to have the real value, we need to be able to quantify the type and the amount, uh, and the amount uh, present. And this can take many forms. We can identify fluid contacts in the reservoir, performing long-term uh, monitor, saturation monitoring, and or monitoring the effectiveness of enhanced recovery projects. In essence, uh, the game uh, for true case information evaluation is uh, saturation and fluid contacts. Uh, pulse neutron uh, logs uh, also have some auxiliary diagnostic applications like gravel pack evaluation is, and sometimes in new wells evaluation where uh, open hole logs might not be possible. There are many more other applications, but um, uh, we, the most common one will be to find the hydrocarbon to, through the casing. Now, just a quick uh, review of the physics uh, of the fast neutrons and the uh, interactions. This is probably something that most of you are familiar with, but we will spend uh, few times in review. Uh, the neutrons are emitted uh, from the source and they interact with the surrounding rock in uh, several ways, depending on the local geology. So the, uh, a pulse neutron tool emits bursts of high energy neutrons, uh, fast neutron of about 14 mega electron volts uh, from the generator. Uh, these neutrons are uh, move out into the borehole and the formation, and they first undergo uh, what are termed elastic and inelastic collisions. Uh, they are um, they collide with the with the nuclear uh, with the nucleus um, from the formation, uh, the, uh, and um, they are either transfer some energy to the environment and causing elastic uh, collision, or they transfer a larger, a larger amount of um, energy to the target nucleus, causing the nucleus to release a gamma ray, and that's the inelastic collisions. Uh, the uh, energy of the gamma ray uh, depends on the type of the element that released it. So we can distinguish the amount of certain elements in the formation. Uh, for example, carbon and oxygen. As the neutrons continue to move out in the formation, uh, they start to lose the energy due to the elastic collision. 
which are the most common type of interactions. In an elastic collision, uh, the kinetic energy of the system remains the same. The neutron starts to lose their energy rapidly, uh, and they collide uh, with um, a nucleus of a similar uh, of a similar mass. And so, um, hydrogen is the main uh, component that's driving the reduction in the energy to thermal levels. Once the neutron energy uh, reach the thermal level, uh, he it then might be captured uh, by a nucleus of a larger atom. Then a gamma ray of capture is emitted. Uh, chlorine, which is present in uh, salt water, it's a common formation element with a very strong affinity or cross section for the capture. So the rate at which neutrons are captured is an indicator of the amount of chlorine and therefore the amount of uh, salt water present. And this formed the, the basis of uh, sigma measurement. For the inelastic and uh, for the capture, we can measure uh, the number of gamma rays, the time, uh, and their energy level. Therefore, the carbon oxygen ratio, which is uh, related to the oil saturation, um, can be can be derived from uh, inelastic energy spectrum, and this is uh, the CO logging mode. While the rate of uh, capture, known as sigma, can be used to determine uh, water saturation, uh, and this is the sigma logging. Finally, we have the third logging mode uh, with our pulse uh, multi-detector multi pulse neutron tool. Uh, it's called Envision, uh, where we measure a total count rate or a burst measurement in order to compute the gas uh, saturation. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about each uh, pulse neutron tool. Uh, that was uh, uh, described in the paper. Uh, this first one is the Raptor, and it's our true casing formation evaluation system with the following components. Uh, it, the physics, it uses the nuclear physical uh, physics principle, and the technology is based on the pulse neutron uh, nuclear physics principle to determine mainly the saturation. Uh, another component is the calibration system. Uh, we have a special design uh, for the tool in order to be calibrated to non-standards. Um, then uh, it's the MCMP characterization or Monte Carlo and particle simulation. It's a modeling system for any wellbore condition and configuration, including formation type. Uh, and then uh, it's the software. We have acquisition and interpretation algorithms that are special designed to improve information and evaluation of the tool performance, borehole, and formation properties. And the last but not the least, we have um, the team, uh, which is um, highly trained petrophysicists, engineers, uh, and sales personnel supported by R&D scientists and system engineers. Something about the reservoir evaluation tool calibration. Uh, the master calibration is performed in a tank uh, full uh, of water, which has three holes in it, uh, oil, gas, and water that stimulates uh, each uh, of this environment. In order to determine the tool sensitivity, we obtain a gain and offset uh, for each measurement and for each uh, detector. In fact, the, the sensitivity calibration is a comparison of the curve, of the curve values in water, gas, and oil uh, points versus the uh, model tool response and allows allow us for uh, two specification, uh, specific correction. 
Uh, now let's see some uh, specification of the reservoir evaluation instrument. Uh, this tool has one source that generates neutron by pulsing around uh, 100 neutrons per pulse, and the one pulse is um, 10 microseconds. And uh, four spectroscopic um, detectors uh, called from the generator proximal, near, far, and long. And there's another uh, fast neutron uh, detector, uh, which is a neutron monitor. Uh, this larger detector array uh, that goes from proximal to, to long detector has the um, high uh, gas sensitivity and senses more formation volume Therefore, the depth of investigation for inelastic is around 7.6 inches, and uh, for the capture is 15.8 uh, inches. The detector type uh, used, it's uh, a modern one. It's made of uh, lanthanum bromide, dubbed with cerium, and uh, it's the brightest detector type, so high signal to noise ratio. It's faster and ha has a um, high density that enables high count rates. The audio of the tool is 1.69 inches. The length is 6.34 meters. The maximum temperature in which uh, can be used is 100 uh, Celsius, but uh, we also have Raptor HT tool which was built for higher temperatures, higher temperature that goes up to 260 Celsius. The maximum pressure is 20K PSI. Uh, and uh, it can go from uh, 2 to 18 uh, inches uh, borehole diameter. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this tool has three logging modes. The envision, which um, in which we differentiate between gas and fluid. The logging speed is uh, between eight and ten foot per minute. Um, we we log one main pass and one repeat pass, and it's salinity independent. Then the carbon oxygen, uh, it's used to differentiate differentiate between oil and water and is run in three feet per minute uh, and uh, we log uh, three main passes and also this one is salinity independent and uh, the third mode is sigma which is logged at higher speed 15 feet per minute with uh, one main pass and one repeat pass but this one is salinity dependent uh, this is an application chart uh, for the three logging modes, and we have on the x axis the porosity and salinity on the y axis. Uh, for the gas evaluation, uh, we can go down to 3PU, and we have examples in Rockies, Canada, and Europe onshore. A different uh, salinity range. Uh, for the oil, we have a minimum porosity of 15 PU at any formation water uh, salinity. And we have examples in North Sea and Middle East. Uh, while for the sigma, uh, we, we need around 18 PU or higher. Uh, and the salinity has to be more than 100 kppm. And we have done some examples in Gulf of Mexico. Uh, about the, the characterization. So the interpretation and the, the petrophysics are founded on the basis of the custom response characterization for each well uh, based on the different environment. Um, like uh, uh, hole size, casing size and weight, um, lithology, we model for 
sandstone, limestone, and dolomite, borehole fluid, formation fluid, tubing strings, and tubing and annulus fluids. Uh, here on, on the left, uh, we have an example of the MCMP modeling uh, for the gas evaluation with porosity on the X and uh, proximal to long uh, burst ratio on the Y axis. Uh, we, we model for 100% water and 100% uh, gas. Uh, so, uh, and the difference between this uh, water field and gas field lines is our gas sensitivity. We can model for different gas densities, different water salinities, and different densities. Here on the, on the right side is an example of the burst uh, characterization for carbon oxygen for near detector. Uh, and we have carbon oxygen ratio versus calcium silica ratio and the porosity on the Z axis. Uh, and we model for 0, 20, and 40 PU. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, you can see, but there's a yellow line representing the uh, 0 PU, then uh, the red box representing the 20 PU, and the blue box uh, represent the model 40 PU. The sandstone matrix uh, points are plotted on the left, while the limestone is plotted here on the on the right. Uh, that was about the reservoir evaluation tool, and now let's uh, see about the second tool used uh, for the example well in Turkey, which is the geochemical spectroscopy instrument that has the similar components. So it uses the same nuclear physics uh, principle. Uh, and uh, this uh, this tool uh, employs the principle of nuclear spectroscopy in order to determine the chemistry or the elemental concentration of formation within the Earth. Uh, this means that the neutrons interact with the atoms in the formation, which in uh, return they emit gamma ray, and gamma ray are detected by the tool. Uh, so basically the same, uh, the same physics. Um, <clears throat> we have a calibration system. It's uh, quite similar, it's the same um, tank, but it's designed uh, for the tool to be, for this tool to be calibrated. Uh, the software, uh, we have, uh, we use a different software. So the geological um, interpretation of the data leads to mineralogy, improvement in petrophysical properties of, of the formation, and the measurement of the hydrocarbon and or total organic carbon. As for the team of petrophysicists, uh, is the same one. Regarding the spectroscopy tool calibration, uh, we perform a base calibration in order to verify the tool functionality as a first step, but also um, help us to uh, proper track the uh, peaks. For example, we have hydrogen peak that uh, must be in channel 64.3. And we also check uh, the time spectrum uh, count rate, which should be around uh, 250 counts per second, 1,000 counts per second. A few specification um, uh, and advantages of the tool. So this tool has just one detector. Um, it has the, the smallest diameter tool in the industry. Uh, the lanthanum bromide is the best detector technology with fast electronics that uh, provide outstanding resolution. It has a direct uh, measurement of the carbon that helps to determine the saturation and uh, is uh, capable to run uh, 
in horizontal conveyance and also in memory logging. Uh, the, something about the mechanical uh, specification, the tool has 3.25 uh, inches with uh, 3.5 uh, meters length. The maximum temperature is 100 Celsius and uh, the pressure is 15 K PSI. Uh, the whole size ranges from um, 3.75 to uh, 25 inches. Uh, the spectrum has uh, 20, 256 windows uh, that have to be fit into energy range from 0 0.6 to 9 mega electron volts. And uh, we measure capture and inelastic uh, elements. What are these elements? Since uh, we use a pulse neutral generator, we can measure in total 15 elements in both capture and inelastic spectrum, and uh, also in natural spectrum. So we have potassium, thorium, and uranium from the spectral gamma ray tool, and uh, calcium, chlorine, gadolinium, uh, iron, um, hydrogen, magnesium, sulfur, silicon, and titanium uh, from the capture, and aluminum, carbon, calcium, iron, magnesium, oxygen, and silicon in the inelastic spectrum. The nuclear spectroscopy has proven to be one of the most effective uh, methods to obtain a meaningful data regarding the fundamental properties of formations. So this has been achieved um, by extracting information from a spectrum of gamma rays in order to identify the parent atom. Uh, this nuclear spectroscopy was first introduced in the industry in 1939. Ergo, our um, spectroscopy tool, with our spectroscopy tool, we measure a total spectrum and then we extract the capture and the inelastic uh, spectrum. Uh, from those spectrum, using the matrix inversion, we determine the elemental standard. An elemental standard uh, is a response of the tool to a single element. Then from the element uh, yields, using the oxide closure method, we get the concentration that are used further uh, in the analysis in order to determine the mineralogy. So here is just an example of uh, how the elemental standards look like for uh, different uh, elements that was extracted uh, from, uh, from the total spectrum. Uh, that had been said in regards to the features and um, uh, technical specification of the tools uh, using the example well in Turkey. And I'd like to talk about now the actual uh, paper that, uh, as Andrew said, was presented last year in November at the ADIPEC conference in Abu Dhabi. And it's called Saturation and Sigma Measurements Information in Carbon Informations with Multiple Pulse Neutron Technology Case Study from Southeast Turkey. This paper is in collaboration with uh, Synth Energy and Sanko Energy from Turkey. And uh, I was guided by my mentors, uh, Natasha Mechik and Dr. Richard Pemper. In order to, to cover the topic uh, of this paper, let me start first with some introduction. Carbonate uh, rocks uh, account for 15% uh, of Earth's uh, sur surface. Uh, but uh, they contain more of um, uh, more than half of the world uh, hydrocarbon reserves. Therefore, the saturation determination in this formation it is very important. As I mentioned already, uh, two different pulse neutron technologies were run in the same uh, well located in southeast Anatolian region of Turkey. It's represented here with uh, red. Uh, one of these uh, technologies 
has a, a single detector geochemical logging tool and the other one has the four detector uh, pulse neutron case for reservoir evaluation tool. These two independent uh, methodology were those incorporated and uh, in order to determine the formation chemistry, mineralogy, uh, sigma and the hydrocarbon saturation. Uh, both uh, logging tools using well A have a pulse neutron generator which emits uh, between 100 and 200 million neutrons per second of high energy. Neutrons that interact with the element in the formation resulting the emission of gamma rays. Uh, so mineralogy is uh, determined from the geochemical tool along with the formation sigma. And by measuring the carbon and oxygen elements, we can also determine the saturation uh, uh, within the geochemical tool. Um, as, I, uh, as I mentioned, we, we measure about 15 elements in capture in elastic and spectra, in natural spectra. Um, this is uh, the capture energy spectrum for uh, well A. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, iron dominant, dominates uh, the spectrum because of the casein presence, uh, followed by the calcium, since the formation is primarily carbonate, and the uh, hydrogen. Um, as I mentioned before, this uh, well A is located in uh, southeast Turkey, uh, where the oil bearing carbonates are uh, formed in the Mardan group. This uh, Mardan group is made up uh, um, of Derdere and Karababa formations. Derdere is deeper and consists of limestone, dolomite, and dolomitic um, uh, limestone. And the presence of the, the presence of the fractures uh, contributes to reservoir quality, while Karababa formation uh, is uh, it has uh, three members A, B, and C. Karababa A consists of mudstone, uh, waxstone, uh, with some organic matter, while Karababa B and C are bioclastic limestone. Uh, and also some dolomite might be present. Overlaying this Mardan group, uh, it's uh, Karabogas formation, uh, which is clayly limestone rich in organic matter materials and uh, represents a source rock, but also a seal for Karababa sea formation. And then going up, we have Germov and Bozova formations. Uh, which are seal rocks and um, consist of uh, shell mainly, but also have some marls and uh, sandstone and some limestone too. All of these formations uh, were evaluated uh, in the well A. Uh, regarding the drilling and completion, this, uh, this well was drilled with fresh water mud uh, eight and a half inch bit size and completed with seven inch casing of 26 and 29 uh, casing weights. The formation oil density is expected to be uh, 0 0.98 gram per cc, equivalent to 13 API, uh, while the formation water is estimated to be on average 10 kppm. All of this uh, information was used to build the MCMP model. Then, uh, since this well uh, is an exploration well in the field, we were able to, to log the maximum amount of data. So we logged three CO passes, carbon oxygen passes, um, one pass to evaluate the gas presence, if any, uh, one sigma pass and one um, geochemical uh, data. Uh, the log was first uh, evaluated qualitatively, so the statistical precision of the logging measurements 
play a significant role in order to validate the tool functionality. A comparison of the Sigma logging is shown here on the left side. And we have with the blue, the main Sigma passes and with red uh, are the repeat passes for the detector one, two, three, and four. While for the carbon oxygen, uh, the quality is obtained by comparison, uh, the average value of the three passes with the numerous uh, stationary measurements that were took uh, during the logging. And also, also we have carbon oxygen uh, for detector one, two, three, and four, and calcium silica ratio again for the all four detectors. So we have the log data that was QC before, and now we need a workflow. Now, why was that? Because uh, always an workflow help us to understand uh, what is the minimum data required and uh, what data has been uh, modeled and analyzed. A workflow for the interpretation data from the two pass neutron logging is provided in this picture. Uh, this consists of three main steps. Prior data, where we gather all the well information. And for this well, we had the open hole logs, uh, the mud log, formation tops, well schematic, and some cement information. Then the case hole uh, logs, uh, which include the data from the geochemical and for the pulse neutron tool. And finally, the various solution that uh, uh, we get as a petrophysical uh, interpretation. Uh, one of the first uh, important solution from these measurements is the formation sigma. Uh, both tools provide this uh, formation sigma, but the geochemical tool requires diffusion correction because of the diffusion effect, uh, while the reservoir evaluation tool has for the fourth detector, which is diffusion free. Um, here on, uh, on the right side, we have the comparison between the formation sigma and with black is the formation sigma uh, from the geochemical tool and with red is the formation sigma from the reservoir evaluation tool. And the good agreement is uh, observed. Another answer product uh, is the mineralogy. So the spectral data from the chemical logging tool was analyzed to determine the dominant lithology and the detailed mineralogy of the formation in this well. Um, environmental correction for borehole size, fluid uh, within the borehole were applied. So uh, the resulting uh, corrected elemental concentration were then used uh, for the mineral solving process. So we have uranium, thorium, and potassium from the spectral gamma ray. And uh, another uh, element from uh, both inelastic and capture spectrum, silicon, calcium, magnesium, aluminum, iron, uh, titanium, chlorine, sulfur, uh, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Uh, as you uh, can observe in this uh, figure, the formation uh, is primary limestone with some dolomites, uh, but also some shaly sand zones uh, were identified. Regarding the porosity, uh, we had available the neutron and density porosities from the open hole data, but we also compute them uh, independently. Uh, from the um, inelastic curves of the four detector pulse neutron tool. Um, from the single detector, uh, which is the geochemical tool, the matrix density was determined based on the resulting mineralogy and computed from mineral volumes. The final porosity was thus derived and improved 
using the bulk density from the open hole data and the matrix density from the pulse neutron geochemical tool. The results are shown here on the on the left side. Uh, this is the histogram, um, and uh, each color represents uh, each formation. And we can see that uh, the main reservoir, which is uh, Karababa Sea, with uh, light pink and there there uh, green, light green. Uh, have uh, and also the source rock have the porosity uh, that goes up to 12 pu, while the for the seal rocks the porosity goes down to 2 pu. A similar histogram is provided for the oil saturation. Again, each color would rep represent uh, each formation. Uh, going forward with the oil saturation. Uh, this was determined from the four detector reservoir evaluation tool in uh, CO mode. An important component of the interpretation uh, is the MCMP modeling, because that helped us to, to predict the tool response for hydrocarbon saturation. Uh, although the, the data from the geochemical spectroscopic tool was not used to determine the saturation in this well. The resulting uh, carbon uh, concentration that includes kerogen and hydrocarbon was completely consistent with the saturation computed from the reservoir evaluation tool. So we have uh, the MCMP model uh, that help us to build the carbon oxygen envelope. On the left here, we have uh, the 100% water line, and on the right is 100% oil line. The curve that moves in between is the measured carbon oxygen ratio. And every time when the tool sees uh, oil, uh, the measured curve will move to the right, while when it sees water, it will go to the left. Uh, this uh, MCMP model helped us to quantify the oil saturation, of course, using also the porosity and the mineralogy from the geochemical logging tool. Uh, so um, this is the, the saturation that was um, derived. And uh, we identify some oil zones in um, Karababa A formation but also in uh, Karabogaz formation. Uh, concluding, uh, we have accepted uh, the challenges like low porosity, mixed lithology, uh, heavy oil, unconventional section with freshwater formation in a case well with the big borehole size. Uh, the tools used in well A, Southeast Turkey. One is a four detector tool uh, of 1.69 inches. And the other one is a single detector tool, 3.25 inches uh, geochemical loading tool. Uh, incorporating the spectroscopy and the case hole formation evaluation uh, were achieved formation mineralogy, formation sigma, porosity, and oil saturation so that uh, both technologies complement each other with this respect to the final petrophysical interpretation, bringing value to the customer. So that was pretty much what I wanted to show. And uh, thank you. And I think now it's a question time. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Anna. Uh, certainly interesting presentation. We have some questions uh, already on the board, but if you do have okay. any other questions, please uh, type them into the question tab and uh, I can put them to, to Anna now. So I have a question, a first question from Ronald. Have you run these tools in the Southeast Asia region, particularly in the Gulf of Thailand? And do you know whether you have done that? 
Uh, I'm not sure about Thailand, but uh, I know we, we run in Malaysia and Indonesia quite often. Of course, carbon oxygen logging for, for oil saturation. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about the spectroscopic tool because I know they are trying to uh, to bring the tools there, but uh, we definitely have clients that are interested in uh, in this type of measurement. But for sure, uh, the reservoir evaluation tool was was logged in uh, in Asia. Okay. It, the 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 um, Sigma tool is basically the same piece of hardware. So you've got the Sigma tool, you can run the, um, the whole the whole uh, product. Is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, another, the, the main difference. Go on. Yeah, the main difference is that um, one tool has four detector and uh, is best in order to uh, identify the oil zones and the saturation, determine the saturation. And the other one uh, is best for the mineralogy because with the reservoir evaluation tool, we cannot um, uh, determine the detailed mineralogy. We just determine the main lithology, right? like sandstone, limestone, and dolomite. But with the spectroscopic tool, we can see exactly what elements uh, are in the formation. Okay, thanks. Another question from Ronald was, what was the length of the main log pass? But I think that was shown on uh, what, three or four slides back. How long was the log pass and I guess how long did it take uh -huh. to actually record the log? Mm, uh, I don't recall, honestly. Uh, it wasn't too long because uh, being carbon oxygen, we cannot, um, and the client uh, doesn't afford to spend too much time uh, with the logging. So I think it was about uh, 200 or 300 meters. And this is the, the medium uh, interval that we usually log with uh, carbon oxygen. Is that answer to your question? Yeah, no, that's good. Okay. Uh, next question from uh, Bogdan Marian. Hi Anna, thanks for the presentation. Is aluminium part of the elements? Asking because in previous experience, it was not stated as deliver deliverable, but I saw it on your presentation. It's uh, aluminium as the element. So aluminium, can you say that again? The, is, the first, aluminium, uh, the is aluminium part of the elements? Is it a deliverable? Yes, yes. Yes, it is. So you measure the amount of aluminium? Six. Or was it from the geochemistry tool? Yeah, from the geochemistry tool here yeah we have uh, aluminium and also uh, we measure with the geochemical tool and with the, um, the reservoir evaluation tool in the carbon oxygen mode and this is uh, deliverable okay there's a couple of other questions here that um, I'm not sure that they're um, I don't quite understand them, so I'll put them to you and maybe you can uh, understand them. Okay, let's see. How did you classify rock type and petroleum systems of each formation in well A? Uh, those are just uh, classification from the previous papers and uh, um this, this is just the uh, literature yeah okay i hope that answers the question that uh, was put forward yeah. uh, next question um, 
a question from uh, Jiang Du. Thanks, Anna, for the presentation. Um, why is minerals indication important? Can you say that again, please? Why? Why is the mineral indications important? So when you have your carbon uh, oxygen log, why are um, the, the minerals uh, important? Uh, we have uh, clients that are interesting because um, sometimes um, uh, they don't, uh, for example, they, they drill a well and uh, they take some cores and um, they know if they will drill another well next to it, um, they won't take core because uh, they think it's the same formation and the same element, minerals will uh, will be there. But um, uh, providing this um, mineralogy from the spectroscopic tool, uh, sometimes um, the clients say, oh, I didn't know I had uh, that mineral in here or, uh, they they just uh, find out that um, uh, even though they didn't take cores using this uh, tool, they can uh, uh, find some other minerals that they thought they will be like farther away or something like this. Okay. On um, a follow up question, on um, I think the main slide, the main presentation log display. Um, what, what's the control on this question from me? Sorry, what's the control on the um, the mineralogy? How do we know that what you've uh, what you've got out is actually true within the ballpark, or what what type of um, what, what type of uncertainty is involved in the mineralogy? display yes uh, for the for this we we usually request uh, xrd and xrf data in order to to have a control of, on this uh, minerals on the elements uh, within the formation so um, uh, we need to start from something we need to have something to to benchmark in order to to proper uh, determine the mineralogy so yeah, the the is XRD and XRF data are uh, are necessary in order to at least uh, when in the formation where um, we never run before, we need uh, something to start with. Okay. Uh, okay, Jiang Du says thank you, and. We are the thank yous for your for your um, presentation. Uh, a round of applause for Anna. Thanks very much for your time, Anna. I think it was uh, well received the the presentation. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, I will um, close the presentation. Uh, close the uh, meeting now. Let me just. Pull up the um, oops. So you should now see the um, the slideshow. As I said, this pa uh, this paper is available on One Petro, so you can uh, download it for further review and an evaluation. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Anna, for, for your uh, presentation. And thanks to all our sponsors here for SBWA in, in Bangkok. We expect to have a meeting on the 31st of March. Uh, who knows whether we'll be actually able to have it in person at our uh, regular Jasmine City uh, um, Hotel down on Sukhumvit. Hopefully we can, but that's going to be up to uh, the 
government authorities and the restrictions and all those things that are uh, happening in this the uh, yeah in in these interesting times so thank you very much for attending thank you very much anna for your for your time i will uh, close it out now thanks and thank you. you thanks for the invitation goodbye bye bye